Hey, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you're watching on Thursday, May 28th, remember that tonight at 9 p.m. Central Time, I am hosting a live Mario Party Q&A featuring Best Darn Diddly Review Show and Secret Levels Podcast. And now to the video with Stevas. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Michael, a.k.a. Rickshaw, and welcome to Worship and Tribute Nerd. Today, we have a quarantine edition, and we're catching up with my buddy, Stephen Harrison. How you doing, Hello, buddy? world. I'm great. <laughs> hey. What's up? What's up, man? How you man, doing? I, haven't, I haven't talked to you in so long. I know, dude. It's been like... I know that we message every now and then, but like seeing face to face was like 2011, maybe. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's silly. It's like yeah. going on a, a decade. Yeah, you you know, like, and for me, it was like I came home, stopped being in a band, and then I like was got stuck for a long time, you know, doing normal people shit. Dude, I know all about that. Like after 2013, <laughs> that was me when Chariot broke up. I didn't do anything for like four years. Like right. I was just like, all right, well, I worked like a handful of just random jobs, and then I got like a decent job. Yeah, grown up, grown up guy job, and just did that. You know, right. and I and I, but I I uh, I didn't like love it in the in the time and at the time, but I appreciated it because you know what it's like to move around so much yeah um so when you're sitting still it does feel good and then at the same time and like just being like touring guy is so like you you have to stop like yeah. <laughs> i i i would almost say like i would recommend if you want to tour forever that's fine but i would i would i would say take two to three years off at some point oh, right <laughs> for for everyone you know what nah. i mean like you you have to kind of be around normal people and like you know kind of ground yourself right I, it's uh, a weird life you know i i ended up working after that in a casino and you know doing 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 like bar stuff and then for i was a dealer for a while but like i feel like at first just getting a normal paycheck was just like Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah, like I can exactly. have things. I could have things. You know, I could get video games. You know, whatever. Yeah. And then after right. a while, after a while, you sit there and you go, "I have all this cool shit, but it just doesn't do it sometimes." You know? <laughs> yeah. There's nothing like playing a show, right? And traveling. Yeah. Being but... your own boss. You know what I mean? Like that. The whole thing. You know? It's like if you have to answer to anyone, it's just one of your buddies. You know, it's like, totally. oh, I forgot to do that thing. My bad, you know. Sorry, the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, we were just conversating about, you know, last time we saw each other, like 2011 or some shit like that, something crazy. I think what I wrestled a bear once in the chariot toured together, like consecutively a couple times or something like that. Yeah, a few times. So it must have been, the, was the Europe tour the last time we saw each other? I think it was Europe, and then we uh, we were like, dude, we should try to get y'all on the Iwabo tour. That was like in the fall, right? Wasn't that how it worked out? Oh, yeah, with um, who else is on that? It was um, it was like the Ghost Bus tour. And yeah, that tour was yeah, legendary. Yeah, and it was I Set to Kill. Um, Vanna. Vanna. Us and Chelsea Grin. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Like when they were young enough that they just like would sit in the van when everybody else would go to the bar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like kids, but they crushed that tour. I remember they were like so fun to watch. Right. So, you, you know, you were in the chariot and now you're in Fever, Fever 333. Fever 333, yeah. Fever Nice. And how are things going with that? Uh, pretty good. You know, it's, um, well, as good as it can be, I guess, right. during a world <laughs> yeah. fucking yeah. virus outbreak. But um, it's it's been fun, man. Um, like our 
third year. Well, it's been cool. Met, met a lot of really cool people. Um, played some shows I'll never forget. Um, right. And uh, yeah, it's just been great. You know, I uh, <clears throat> I was really happy whenever that. I feel like that one video out of nowhere just kind of like, you know, got y- got everyone's attention. You know, like the it was like out in the truck. You know, y'all are jamming. Yeah. And that was yeah, sick. yeah, <clears throat> yeah. That was cool. I um, I've only ever like as far as like serious bands go, I've only really played in the Chariot. So, and then and then there's like we talked about before, like that four year gap where I wasn't really playing. I wasn't doing anything. Right. So I like forgot what it's like to be in a band completely. Mm-hmm. I was completely like much muscle atrophy. Like I yeah. just didn't know how to play a show and like. I just because I hadn't done it in so long, and I also didn't know how to listen to other people's ideas. <laughs> right. So like, right. When, so when Jason was like, "Yo, we're gonna do this thing. We're gonna like pull up in this truck and play," I was like, "Is that cool? I don't know. If that's a good idea." <laughs> and like, I was just so like nervous. I remember being such a nervous wreck the day of because things weren't really like things were kind of behind schedule and like not really kind of like. And Jason's just like chilling i remember thinking like this could really fall apart and no one else seemed to care but i was like a basket case and then it went over really well um so yeah that that day and that video kind of was the spark i guess yeah and ever since then you know i felt like y'all you know had a presence and it didn't take y'all very long you know to start doing things and there's always there's always, you know, like the hope for that, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. But like, if you do the right thing, you know, it gets everybody's attention and you're back on track. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I always thought it was really cool that y'all, you got back, you know, you came back pretty yeah. quick. So thanks, man. But yeah, uh, what, you know, like, what were you doing in the meantime for a normal job and stuff like that? Dude, I was chariot ended and I didn't work for like, for like four months, four yeah. or five months, I had like a little bit of cushion, but like I didn't, I was just like, I had no idea how normal life worked because yeah. I've been touring since I was like 16, 17. Right. So I, I had like a little bit of like financial cushion and like it just didn't click that I just wasn't getting per diems every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I just burned through all of that money and like, four months and um like was just doing just stupid shit with the money like buying my friends whatever they wanted like if we were out my friends like well i like these shoes like they're yours like just right dumb shit like paying for like food for everyone all the time and and then like tax season comes along and like i'd never done taxes before so they're like, oh, yeah, you owe us a lot of money. And I was like, I don't have any of that. And they're like, we're all here in debt to us now. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, basically, I started working at a deli um, next to the shop that I was getting tattooed at a lot. And then um, I was there for a little bit, just fucking cutting meat, making sandwiches. And then nice. worked at Urban Outfitters for a little while. And I think that might be to this day the worst job I've ever had. Dude, retail like, is terrible, man. Yeah, I mean, retail's difficult, but like this Urban Outfitters in particular was like the number one urban in the country for uh, theft. Oh, really? And like, and loss just via people running in and just taking shit. So, and I don't have any pride in urban to stop anyone from fucking taking clothes. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, like, I'm gonna go far. Like, wa- like watching people walk out with shit. Man. Yeah, it's not my for problem. real. I'd be like, yo, hey, try harder, you know? <laughs> right. Or grab me a pair of these jeans and meet me outside right. <laughs> later. But yes, I did that. I just left that job one day. I just walked out and never came back. And right. then I started working at this really cool retail space called Wish. I was just doing like back stock shit, just taking boxes off trucks. And yeah. Wish is just only in Atlanta. It's like a streetwear boutique. Oh, okay. And that's where I met a lot of my friends that I have today. Um, so I'm really thankful for that time. After that, I started working at a place called Stephen Allen, which there's like a few of them around the country. It's just kind of more of like a menswear kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, did that for a while. And then I started working for Bounce TV, which is sort of like a, a black entertainment television kind of thing. 
Right. Um, and that's sort of where I ended. I also worked on an app called Brown Sugar, which is like kind of like Netflix, but for like all of the black exploitation films from like the 60s, 70s, 80s. Yeah. That's um, so, yeah. So that's what I was doing before Fever. And then Jason called. And then I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> How long? Let me ask you a question. How long of a gap before you were like going crazy? Like, was it the first? Oh, um, <laughs> like at work? Yeah. It was immediate. Well, it was it was when the money ran out. <laughs> like, so like the first four months, it's like when the money was gone. Like because when because you're bummed that you're not playing shows and touring, but at least you have some money to just kind of like do what you want. Yeah. But I'm an idiot, and I didn't know how to save. I didn't think about like anything. Yeah. So yeah, because when you when you just when it's a card, especially you know what I mean. Like you're just like you don't see it. You're like oh, yeah. I got it, I got it. And like me myself too. Like I don't. Dude, I hate money. Like, if like if I have it, I don't give a shit. Like, you you want me to buy you something? Yeah, sure. But then whenever yeah. I'm like getting broke, I'm like, oh man, I'm stressed out. But it's totally. like, but art is dying because just everyone just cares money. You know what I mean? Like, right? Money. Like that's fucking yeah. it. And I'm like, the world is crazy, man. What happened to like passion about stuff and like you know wanting totally. to wanting to travel and like see things? Everybody's just like mm-hmm. on their phone, money on the phone mm-hmm. money <laughs> yeah so. yeah yeah man it's it sucks it's like it, it's so vital to every person you know yeah and um, and sadly our phones are uh vital as well right um but that's why you kind of need to need to like voluntarily detach every now and then like every so often i'll like take a week off like social media just to kind of like reboot i'm probably due for another week soon but um uh but yeah man it's just like it's it's a weird life man it's a weird switch to go from like touring like a lot to just like regular yeah deal um and and i've always had a thing too like you when i was touring you start you start thinking like all i want to do is just chill all i want to do is chill right and then you and then everybody gets home from tour and like first day everybody starts being like i'm bored dude yeah what are we gonna do and then then, you know and then let's say you have like a month off oh god yeah. you're like at the end of that month you're like all i want to do is go back to touring you know (laughs) yeah yeah so it's like the, the human condition is just it's never enough you know what i mean you get you want one thing you get it it and then it sucks you know what i mean yeah, it's just kind of it's it's just understanding what it is you're doing and being realistic with your life and and everything because my problem with the chariot is it ended when I was 23 and I knew I had some more years in me yeah. to play music. Oh yeah. Um but like then like around 26, 27 I was totally okay with not playing music again right. like i was looking i was looking at other things like right. because it's again it's like a lifestyle thing it's like like it like it, it had to have been fever or something like fever to kind of take me out of that because i got a lot of offers to play music after that from other bands but i didn't take them because it's like it's like touring and just any band didn't sound appealing didn't sound more appealing than kind of what i had built at home you know yeah um so when like fever just seemed like the the right thing yeah at the right time so it's just kind of being realistic with yourself and time and um yeah and i feel like there's times where like when you get home and you start you start making money and you start kind of like having things and you're like you start becoming a homebody i've accidentally said like retired musician and like when people people are get weird and they're like what do you mean retired? Like I saw you playing the other day and it's like, well, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to say it like that, but it means you have kind of like put your dream to rest because of res- sure. your own responsibility. But then, yeah. but the thing is anybody could spark it back up at any moment. You know what I mean? Totally. So. <laughs> and also, and also like we're the, where we come from, it's, it's almost like a rule that you have to just tour so heavy. Yeah. Like, like the time we came up, like the time you and I were touring a lot and the, the world, the genre we existed in right. was like, you just toured your ass off. There was really no other 
Exactly. You just stayed on perpetual tour and hopefully you, 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 you got successful, but, um, that's not the case anymore. Yeah. Well, like, it, like, it, back then everybody was real thirsty, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so it was like, yeah. if you turn down a tour, someone else is like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? Totally. So, <laughs> totally. Yeah. But that's, that's what I mean is like being a musician now, it can look however you want to look. It's just our view of success back then was just getting on the biggest tour, getting in front of most people possible. And that's not necessarily, I mean, that's, it's still sick. It helps. Yeah. It's still cool. But like, <laughs> yeah. that's not, there's no blueprint anymore. I'm, I'm starting to realize, right. um, like some things just that, like the fucking like six, seven, eight band bills. Yeah. Just don't, they're so rare now because yeah. you don't need to fucking do that. Right, um, but th- that's when kids were thirsty too back then too. You could like have a show that started at noon and people were there with their fucking backpacks. You know what I mean? Totally, like, <laughs> totally. You're kid- right. Kids aren't like that now. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> they're really not. Like I, I remember having a discussion with like a younger, like a 19 year old, 20 year old kid I worked with, and we were talking about live shows, and you know he was like, he's like, I agree with you, live shows are the sickest thing ever and then i was like but you don't listen but you only listen to hip-hop and he's like well yeah and i was like have you ever been to a show where people play instruments and stuff and he was like yeah i could see where you're going with this and i think it would be cool but you know hip-hop is my thing and you know i'm like i'm like okay i get where you're coming from you know it's like it's difficult to talk with someone so young because it's just like (laughs) the game's changed man but but i gotta i gotta say man like there was a uh, okay. I wrestled a bear once. I can say this about you guys because you were kind of a one of one band. Mm-hmm. Like there, there were well, I don't know back back when we were kind of doing our thing. Being kind of a unique band was sort of cool ish. Right. Like not enough that people really wanted to do it, but enough that people like respected it. Yeah. You know. Well, there so was, like I feel like. There was like all these unique bands that like that didn't sound like anyone else, but then everyone started lumping all the unique ones into a group. Totally, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> totally, you're right. Well, what what I was gonna say is like it, like live shows, like a good live show. What does that really look like? Like for me, it's always been a band playing their heart out. Yeah, like that. It has nothing to do with the audience. To me. Growing up, that's what going to a good show was, was watching a band play till they couldn't play anymore. That that was always my view of yeah. a good it. show. But now, like, there are videos of, like, and not, I'm not even shitting on this, but it, there's, like, videos of, like, bands playing shows and the audience is going absolutely fucking crazy and the band is not... Right. Really, they don't seem so engaged, but it's like that's the sickest show. When <laughs> yeah. when the show itself is great, but like I'm not. It's like the the energy. I don't feel like is reciprocated from the band. Sometimes right. it's a relationship. Um, you know, you gotta like you gotta talk with your energies. You can't just like if if people are going buck wild for you, and you're staying like you gotta feed on that. You know, soak totally. some of it up and start jamming out. You know what I mean? Enjoy yourself. Totally. <laughs> And, and, you know, people, you know, do what you want to do, but like, that's always been my view. But with hip hop shows, I feel like some of these rappers are crushing their live shows, man. Like, really? it's like there's their live shows are just better than some of like the um, some of the like heavier bands that I've seen live shows. Like we, we do have maybe, quote unquote, there's like more like violence i don't know what you would even call it but like some of these some of these hip-hop shows it's like the entire front the entire back of the room all bouncing there's like Mm. pits there's like the the rappers themselves are like going fucking off you know like it's it is an energy but it's not the same kind of energy as like a hardcore show in the sense of like yeah i don't and, know it's like the mentality's a little different as and well. i've always been a fan of rap and hip-hop and stuff but it just it just feels like lots of the new stuff doesn't feel the same to me you know what i mean it doesn't like catch my attention but but the last i think the last hip-hop show i went to was like run the jewels and it was it was definitely like a hype crowd you know what i mean so totally 
anyways, let's get uh, let's get to some nerdy things. You know, we're we're in this quarantine part of our lives. <laughs> you know, none of us have ever had to do this before. I think like yeah. 1918 was like the last time they had a pandemic scare or whatever, something like that. So, and they didn't have, you know, what kind of TVs they had back then. <laughs> yeah, shit. They were bored playing with fucking sticks and I don't know what the hell they were doing, but we, we have it way better. Right. But, uh, so on our channel, you know, we just, we kind of talk about what kind of nerdy shit you're into. Like, my thing has always been X-Men growing up, you know? Okay. So, like, video games, movies, whatever. What's your thing and what you've been doing to keep busy? Well, I... Hmm. Well, I didn't really... I loved playing, like, N64 and stuff like that, like most kids, nice. like, growing up. How old are you? I just turned 37. Okay. So... <laughs> I am 30, mm -hmm. um, and um, so the consoles of choice are were, were like N64, Sega Genesis before that. Yeah. Like I, I, I wasn't really deep into video games, but N64 was kind of like my generation's like thing. Right. Play, PlayStation as well, PS2. But like, I stopped really playing video games after Sega Dreamcast. Oh, nice. Um, and I had a Sega Dreamcast, and I loved it. Um, and I'm actually thinking about getting enough, getting one for my birthday. Um, but uh, I think my the the thing that's really followed me, my my nerdy thing that's followed me throughout my whole life has been Pokemon. Nice. Like during this this fucking lockdown situation, I swear to God, I have the craziest resurgence of like Pokemon like love and just like i swear like there's this dude I, I fucking follow on instagram i only follow like seven people on instagram and one of them is this dude leon hart and I, he's my he's my hero because he literally is doing what i wanted to do as a kid he's he's got like almost nine hundred thousand subscribers on youtube and Damn. all the fucking man does is open packs of pokemon cards <laughs> in front of a fucking camera dude I've he always drops I've always been so fascinated by like unboxing, like, and I have, you know, like I've been doing this YouTube for like a year. I'm, I'm pushing like 800 subscribes, you know, I'm like on my way to like, you know, being a real YouTube, I guess. But like, sure. My buddy was like, dude, you gotta, I, I collect action figures. And so mm -hmm. every time something is like on my doorstep, he's like, dude, you got to start doing unboxing videos. I sat down and did an unboxing video one time, filmed it all and was like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> and I like deleted all of it. Like I was just like, I don't even like what why is this entertaining to anyone? Like I'm the type of person who can't sell out. Like it feels weird to me, you know what I mean? I feel you. I feel you. Wait, but is it selling out or is it selling a product? Like is I'm, Yeah. I mean you, you know what I mean? It's pretty much like marketing someone else's stuff. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I hear you, but at the same time it's like you've got like, okay, I can only speak for, like, this Pokemon card opening guy because right. I've never really been into any other kind of unboxing. Right. But there are so many people who <coughs> can't get this thing you're unboxing. Yeah. They can't, and they'll never get it. Right. And every, But everyone knows what it's like to finally get this thing. That's right. And to open it and to look at it. <laughs> so to see someone else do it, it's like it goes beyond who gave it to you. Uh, like I any of those other kind of superficial things, it's like they they're they're kind of just reliving through you this moment. Yeah, you know. And um, I think I think that's the thing I kind of forgot about it. You know what I mean? Because I because because it came in the mail. My boy's like, "Yo, dude, you should do some unboxing videos." I was like, "Okay, I'll save it." So it sat there, yeah. and then I got like a second package, and then that sat mm -hmm. there, and then I like did it, and I wasn't even excited anymore. And I think that's like part of the problem of how I looked at it. You know, it's got to be like right. the day of, like, "Oh shit, what's on the front?" It's totally, <laughs> yeah. totally. <laughs> so, totally. Yeah. So next time, yeah, you know, if I try to do that, I'll remember. That my own excitement is what fuels the project. So you got to use the excitement. That's why everyone's fucking thumbnail on uh, on fucking uh, YouTube is like <laughs> like looking at you. Like, <laughs> yeah. right. It's because everybody wants they feed off that excitement. Right. So you you, you got to show them that you're stoked. 
whether it's you know right always 100 percent genuine in the thumbnail or not but um, you can you can fake it for a thumbnail yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So my brother was like a big, he lost so many of my game systems. <laughs> like he lost my Super Nintendo. It, How do you lose the, a whole game system? Well, it was like, so at the time, whenever we were kids, it was like, he's six years older than me. So when he moved out of the house, he's like, he's like, do you still play the Nintendo? And I was like, well, I got the Super Nintendo now. So he'd, yeah. be, he'd be like, let me borrow it. So he like moved to Texas and he'd be like, okay, I'm gonna borrow it. And okay. then, so then, the, so then the next time I would, he'd be like, "Hey, you still playing that Super Nintendo?" And then I'm no. like, "And I'm like, uh, well, I have the S- Nintendo 64 now." And he's like, "I'm gonna yeah. borrow it." And then every time he'd be like, "Oh, I lost it. Oh, I was moving and I lost it, you know." So, so I went over to his house the other day, and there's this N64. I was like, "Let me borrow that." <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what kind of what kind of Pokemon games? on n64 are tight well there's pokemon stadium um and then pokemon snap pokemon stadium was like the first kind of like battle pokemon scenario that was like outside of the game boy i believe right um and that was just fun i mean these days it's not really the same because it's (laughs) You've got like the most ridiculous games and shit out there that yeah. doesn't even really compare. It, it's kind of it's like a turn based fighting kind of game, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but uh, I don't even play. I mean, I don't play that. Like I, I swear to God, like my birthday's coming up, so I'm like, tr- I'm thinking about getting a Game Boy and getting like some of the early Pokemon games for uh, for Game Boy. Um, They've got like all these crazy new ones out for like a, a Switch. Yeah. And dude, I, I haven't owned or played a video game in <laughs> fucking 15 years. I longer, well longer. Right. Like, so I, do, I just feel like I would look silly with a Switch, but like <laughs> trying to figure out, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I'm like, I'm fully, I don't know. Like, I love watching other people play video games though. Like, yeah. Uh, um my good friend made me like this weird kind of console with like a bunch of different consoles built into it and games yeah and me me and my girlfriend will play uh shit on there every now and then like um what's that banjo game banjo banjo kazooie -Kazooie. yeah Yeah, she'll play that every now and then and uh keith buckley from etid it has a twitch again i don't play video games i just log on to watch him play fucking call of duty and talk shit every now and then (laughs) um but dude yeah i don't know like even beyond games like i'm i'm thinking about collecting pokemon cards again yeah because when i was growing up dude like i was a fucking actual pokemon master (laughs) i swear to god my collection (laughs) was sitting on everyone it was stupid it was stupid and then I remember one day, I was probably like 15 or something. I was like, I wonder where, the, where my Pokemon cards are. And there was nowhere to be found. Damn. And literally, my mom and my grandma to this day are like not, neither one of them will admit to who got rid of them because it was such a fucking valuable book. It was ridiculous. Like, yeah. I had literally everything. Like, shit. I, I had like, like before the second generation hit America, my mom had a plug in Japan who would like send us shit that was like, yeah years or like however the fuck long before it came to america and i just had them and i had the casing and everything and one of those two got rid of them like my logic tells me it's my grandma because she didn't pay for them but then part of me thinks my mom's kind of like flagrant sort of like absent mind every now and then would like right not thinking like it's just a mother kind of thing you know what i mean yeah, yeah. It, like if so, like if your mom walked by and saw the Nintendo was on and just decided to shut it off, and then you're like, you're like, no. <laughs> exactly. That is exactly right. it. That I you ordered that perfectly. Right. Yeah. But so I, I don't know. I actually saw, dude. I saw like a Pawn Stars episode where they were talking about Pokemon cards. Oh my mm. god! It was like a hundred grand or something. Like for the whole yeah, set. Dude. Like like the dude was like. The dude was like, okay, for the whole set, I want 100 grand, but like this one in particular is like worth 50 grand. And the Pawn Star guy was like, oh, yeah, I don't know about that. And they called it a professional, yeah. and the professional was like, yep. 
<laughs> That's yeah. what they're worth. <laughs> yeah. So. I, which I fucking hate that bald idiot. <laughs> I hate that fucking guy. Every time I like, it, it, you'll bring in the fucking like Ark of the Covenant and he'll be like, mm, I'll give you five bucks. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah. it's like GameStop. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But uh, I need to rewatch that episode. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I mean, that's insane to me. Like, I, there's, I, I mean, I've had, like, a couple of card sets that were worth, like, some hundreds of dollars or something. Like, like there used to be, there was this card game called Marvel Overpower, and it was, like, a pretty much, like, Magic, but the Marvel kind of version of it. And I, ha- I had, like, the whole set of that, and I remember seeing it being, like, three, worth three to five hundred bucks or something. But even that, my house in Alabama got shit got stolen back in the day mm-hmm. all my comic books and all my card collections and shit and yeah i didn't even care about the money though to that one was just like i've been fucking collecting these since eighth grade sure. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's such a bummer like for honestly like the fact that a card can go for 50 grand and the whole collection because that was during pokemon craze that was like the first generation so yeah. <laughs> Whoever's parents were smart enough to be like, you know what? I've spent so much money on little Timmy's Pokemon cards. <laughs> yeah. He's going to grow out of it. It's inevitable. But let me hold on to them. Who, whatever yeah. parents were that smart could potentially be sitting on a hundred grand or more. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Depending on the kids, how much he has. That, so and that's like, like, that's a special kind of parent, though, because you know. How, you know there was a shit ton of people where their parents just threw away all their shit and then Hell yeah. and then in this day and age of like retro coming back like they're like sorry son <laughs> <laughs> right yeah we could all use a hundred and fifty thousand dollar pokemon stimulus right now i think <laughs> no shit man my god but uh who's your so who's your favorite pokemon dude war turtle nice did you portal. how'd you feel about the uh the po- detective pikachu movie i thought it was great hell yeah ryan reynolds gold you do yeah I, you do ryan reynolds with any cool franchise you got except for green lantern you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but the thing is i don't really understand the ending of detective pikachu in the sense of like it was just such a weird like so what pikachu is your like what the hell like it was just a weird kind of right. like the way it ended was so strange but the the way they incorporated the pokemon like across generations right uh was pretty cool so yeah i was actually pretty excited to see that so i saw that with my yeah. with my girlfriend and and her kid and i was just like <laughs> sure i'll go <laughs> right <laughs> like, you know i'll make some time to go with y'all <laughs> totally yeah when secretly you're like <laughs> <laughs> yeah Anything else, Nerdy, you would like to talk about before we start to wind down? Um, You know what? I feel like I was never a gear nerd as far as being a musician. I was never like a video game nerd. Um, Not even really a movie nerd, you know, because like I I dig the Marvel movies and shit. Yeah. But like I was never like into it, into it. But man... At 30 years old, the fact that it's been like fucking about 20 years and I'm still into Pokemon. Yeah. I'm just like, Dude, God just, bless it, man. There's like, there, there's times where like, the, okay, so I went after I started touring and stuff and, you know, and I wrestled a bear once, there was a point in time where I like was like, whoa, wait a minute. How come I haven't picked up any X-Men comics in like five years? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it just like awoken all that nerdy shit in me. And then, you know, like, and then fast forward a few years and then I'm like, what? Wait, how come I haven't played any video games in a long time? And then that awoken again. You know, it's like stuff like that. It goes through, you go through like phases of like, I used to love this. Why don't I still love it? Yeah, it's because when you're in that band world, your your mind is so consumed with the band. It's like your your band is always kind of doing like this, yeah. like constantly. Um, but the smart people, like not me, or like <laughs> I think who was a good like, like Vincent from the Acacia Train was good because like people because he's like he loves video games. He's yeah. he like collects games and consoles and stuff like that and makes it known while he's still in a band right so like he meets people who have the same interests and he trades and swaps and 
You know, yeah. like had I been that like smart about Pokemon while I was touring, Dude, I'd be fucking killing it right I now. I know, right? I remember like s- some of the I said to kill people were like when we were doing doing that tour, the Ghost Bus tour. One of the guys was like, every show he would go to, you know, somebody would like bring him like Game Boy games that they just had laying around, or like I think specifically Pokemon cards and stuff. So he would just mm-hmm. like tweet. I love this. I love that. Yeah. You know, like bring a Game Boy game to the show. You get in for free. And I'm like, totally. I was like, I was in band for fucking six years. How come I didn't <laughs> think of that? <laughs> I know, man. It's so weird. I don't I have no idea why we just didn't, they didn't click with us. I remember one time our guitarist, Rusty, tweeted that we liked Butterfingers. <laughs> And he had like fifteen butterfingers or some shit at the fucking merch table. He had like so many like candy bars. It was just the funniest thing. And I remember being like, "Whoa, that's crazy!" But it never clicks to ask for anything cool right. after that. I don't yeah. know why. I, just, I think I think I wobbles. Uh, the most gratifying moment where we tweeted that we wanted to do something or liked it and someone came through was like when we were in Florida going to Orlando with a day off. We were like. Who you know? Who had uh, got fucking passes to Universal Studios? And then yeah. like some, and then you know, a couple of dudes, which we st- I still kind of talk to, were just like, we work at Disney and Universal, and then so we got like free trips to Universal. You know, that's so tight. Free trips to Disney. Shout out Kyle and Anthony because that was like the coolest shit. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like that's it's so like sick. I had a lot of. Being in a band was rough sometimes, but at least I got that fucking free trip to Universal. It's amazing. That, <laughs> yeah. That's fucking cool. <laughs> right. Chariot never caught breaks like that. <laughs> no one gave a fuck about us. I remember one time we played a show and someone, I have no idea where we were, but someone, someone worked at, I think it was Domino's. And it was like midnight, and we all went to Domino's and opened the fucking Domino's and made our own pizza. Yeah, that's sick. So yeah. it's not as sick as going to fucking Universal. <laughs> yeah. It's but still we went, sick, though. It, it was it was an experience. I'm glad I know how they do it and all that. But I just, you went to fucking yeah. Universal for a day off. We that. had a day on and went to a closed <laughs> Domino's. I just think, you know, like if we would have, espe- you know, like. Whether, no matter what band you're in, like at that point in time, if you would have just remembered to tweet about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because I feel like we lucked out so hard because we were just like, wait a minute, we could ask people because <laughs> we never really asked for shit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like we would just do, we would do like, hey, if you come to the, if you come to the show and you know, say your name's Gary Busey, you get in for free, <laughs> you know, and then. Yeah. And then other people are like, I got free Pokemon cards. I got free. <laughs> I'm like, you're like, fuck, I could have really been utilizing this right. whole voice thing. Yeah. So with Fever, is the COVID affecting that and like what you would be doing, you know, where, where you're going to be touring or where you're going to be recording? Or, um, Well, we had quite a bit of time off. We had a tour in um, Japan and Malaysia and India in like the end of January, early February. Mm-hmm. So between that and like early July, we we didn't have any shows. We were just going to be writing the record, the new record, and um, all of that. Um, which either way is a long fucking amount of time writing or not. Yeah. So the album is like, I guess, close-ish to being done. Um, I had some like writing sessions that I was going to do with some other artists that aren't happening. Uh, I mean, as far as like shows, not, it just hasn't, I mean, now the, sh- now the tour is canceled, the summer tour is right, canceled, right, right. but, um, it does start in July, but now, um, but other than that, the band hasn't really been too affected. We had a couple like random plans we were going to do just, just some like random things that aren't happening now. So, um, so probably 2021 is whenever y'all start doing stuff again. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, whenever the shit is done. So probably sometime next year, you know, Um, like somebody was talking to me the other day and I was talking about shows and like movies, they've delayed some movies and stuff. And I'm like, 
once we get back in the theaters or once we get back at the shows and they were and the person talking to me was like i don't think we're gonna be like that anymore i don't think it's gonna and and i was kind of like questioning like i get being safe and i get wanting obviously like i've i've been indoors for so fucking long at this point but (laughs) but like but like once things are cleared up we can't give up on like going to shows we can't give up on going to the theater you know what i mean like how do you feel about that i've heard a lot of people saying a lot of things like i heard someone say oh dude people are never gonna shake hands again i was like what the (laughs) fuck are you talking about you think shaking hands is going to be extinct right. after all this? You're fucking stupid as fuck for saying that. <laughs> but I think that, um, I think things will be, there'll be like a weird sort of gray zone for sure. Because like, even now, like people are, cur- are still dying. Like the curve has not been flattened. <laughs> <laughs> the curve has not been flattened, but they're still already talking about like, festivals and shows like like they're like planning shit for the fall and like they're like yeah they're like okay we'll, we'll still have shows but you can't fucking touch each other and you can't stand in <laughs> right. a line which to me is like people are hungry to go back to normal whether or not people are dying or not yeah so if the curve is flattened and people and this thing starts to really get eradicated and we get a cure and we get all sorts of things people are for sure going back to normal right I, I think there would definitely be a lot of people who are a little hesitant naturally, for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm one of those people. Um, and I think that um, the normal activities will look different, but it will go back to normal. I, I, like, there will be shows, there will be movies. Um, I think some activities can't recover due to certain businesses kind of tanking. Right. Um, that's different. But I, I do think that shows will happen again. That's I think that's... I'm not even trying to say that, like, if we're not smart, like, shit can't go wrong to the point that shows can't happen. Mm. Because, like, I live in Georgia, and, like, our governor is an idiot and opened the city. You can do whatever you want. Go wherever you want with however many people. Like, I I wish our governor would change his mind, but uh, that's just not what's going on. Um, But, yeah, man, I don't know. Like, I, I... not even saying it can't get there because there's people in power that make stupid decisions. But I think as long as people are smart, I think this does have an end. You know, I do think that shit yeah. can't go back to Well, yeah, I, I, I just say we can't give up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, of course I'm going to be, I'm going to stay indoors for as long as it takes. But when mm-hmm. the time comes, we have to keep art alive. That's, totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. and I think it's, I mean, I think it kind of sucks to have a mentality like it's never going to be the same. It's like, nah, if we just stay at home for a little bit and be safe, we can make it go back to normal. Sure. Totally. Yeah. I mean, the earth has had worse. Right. Ultimately. Well, I hope it gets back to normal and I hope that someday we could do an in-person interview. And uh, I like to do like I started. The funny thing is like right before all this happened, like I started you know, kind of cracking down on some of the interviews I did and like make it funner somehow. So some of the last couple of ones I did before the, before the COVID hit was like, I did an interview with Frankie, brought out some street fighter. So we did an interview and then we also faced off with some street fighter and put it up Mm -hmm. on the screen. And then my buddy, Thomas Eric, uh, from follow Troy, he came out to a show, loves wrestling so we brought out the N64 NWO revenge game and we all oh, like, loved yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so we all like Royal Rumbled for a little while. And so in person, I try to like engage a little more. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you tell me you like Pokemon, I'll try and bring some sort of Pokemon to the table. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's been amazing catching up. <clears throat> yeah. Likewise, man. This is cool. And we'll do this in person when shit gets back to normal. Like, you know, we, we just have to yeah. like it's been almost a decade yeah man. what the <laughs> hell and uh, oh i f- almost forgot the fucking what do we always used to say let's trash this place let's trash <laughs> this place <laughs> when, before i go i gotta talk about the origin of that i well, man it's kind of a fuzzy memory but i have a feeling it was probably in europe yes that's and what... one day you were we were in the venue. I remember it was 
I think it was kind of dark. And you just said that to me one day. <laughs> Let's trash this place. As if we had just been trashing venues for the whole tour. Which we're having. Yeah, we were like <laughs> the most you're... respectable group of people. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, you were just, you're Let's just like, trash this place. Trash this place. And I thought that was the funniest thing to the point that every time I saw you after that, it's like, L T T P. Let's trash this I think, place. I honestly think I remember the venue too, and it was like all of us in the same room, literally chilling so hard, and just like <laughs> people on their phones, a couple people, you know, broing down, telling jokes, and I was like, "Let's trash this place like we trash places." <laughs> wait, wait, wait! One more memory. One more yeah. memory. I don't remember the details about okay. this. Because we were we in like a sprinter van or something, yeah, or in two sprinter. Yeah, vans? we were in two sprinter vans, and y'all were in one. And then like us, it, I think Eyes of a Trader, right? They were we split. They them were up. in ours, I think. Yeah, some of them were the us, yeah, and yeah. some of them were the Yeah. What happened? Did you get left oh, in like yeah. some country or something? Because <laughs> okay. I remember ar- arriving in some whole ass other country, right? And they they were like, yo, where the fuck is Rickshaw? <laughs> he fell asleep on a bench or woke up on a no, bench or no, something. No, no, no. And- <laughs> All right, let's go through. I'll, I'll try and bust this out as fast as I can. You know, I just remember we were in like the Czech Republic or some shit. And it was it was Krista's birthday. Right. And it was so my birthday was the week before. So she's like, oh, we're going to have to party hard on my birthday, right? And then uh, the Eyes of a Trader guys, the band that was opening the show that night was like their homies. So they were like, oh, we're going to have to party, you know what I mean? And so all of us were all hanging out after the show. I was already like feeling a little buzzed. And then there was also like uh, some girl I knew that was like, can't wait till you're here, you know, in in my city. I'll buy you guys drinks or something, you know? So then I see her, and she goes, uh, "She goes, are you ready to drink with me? I was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, I'm a little buzzed already, right? So take it easy on me. And she goes, Bar-, she's like, bartender, I'll have a beer and three shots of vodka. And I was like, okay. And then she grabbed the beer. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, what, you're, you're straight up buying me three shots of vodka? And she goes, what, are you not man enough? So I was like, bah, 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 <laughs> right? So then I blacked out. I blacked out, and then I remember coming to, and I was in the middle of the city, just like out on the street, buildings around me. I look at my watch, it's like 5.30 a.m., and then I walked back to the venue, which, keep in mind, I had no sense of direction. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. So I was just walking straight. I was like, I'm just going to keep walking this way. And then I walked for like 25 minutes and then saw the venue. I was like, okay, must have walked 25 <laughs> minutes away. <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then I like knocked on the door and there was like people cleaning up and they were like, sorry, we're about to leave. And I was like, can I send some emails? Because I have no yeah. phone. I have no <laughs> nothing. So I sent a couple of emails and they were like, sorry, bud, but we got to close up. So I sat outside uh, from like 6 a.m. until about noon. And then they pulled up in the Sprinter vans and they were like, oh, and then, and then they were like, dude, like it, we were all messed up and we left. And then when we woke up, we were like, oh, where's Ricky? <laughs> so, yeah. So that's the way that went oh, down. And, my then, God. I- and then Josh was saying that he saw me. And I, and I kept and I kept going. I kept going. Marilyn Manson, because <laughs> there was this picture of Marilyn Manson at that bar. I remember, and I kept going. Marilyn Manson. So, yeah. So I was gone. And then we went I to the remember, Bone Church. Remember, we went to Bone Church after that. Yeah. That was interesting. That was an interesting sight. Right. The the utter confusion in our van about you just being left. We were just blown away. Like yeah. it, it was as if you had died. Or like, <laughs> How could he be lost? Like it's oh, like yeah. we just had no idea. But that's oh, it was uh to be hungover and go through that. I was like, maybe I should change my life. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you for doing this, and I guess we'll tell everyone to leave us a comment if you got some comments. Uh, you know about 
the chariot or fever 333 leave them down below and like it like and subscribe yeah remember to like and subscribe and yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this for a job, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Come on, support my man Rickshaw, okay? Don't be a fucking bitch. Support my man. You, you know what? If you want a shirt, send me your address. I'll, I'll hit you up. I'll send you. Absolutely. One. Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll get the package and let it sit by my door <laughs> for a few days, nah. and then do an unboxing when I'm not stoked anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If you even just were like. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I'll make like a thumbnail. Like I'll be like, fuck yeah. Would, <laughs> I'll send you another one just to see that excitement. <laughs> All oh, right, man. man. Well, it's been fun catching up. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Well, see you later, nerds. See you later. God bless you.